The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. John the Baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. please be seated. <coughs> Let there be light. Our first lesson today from the book of Genesis goes as far back as you can possibly go. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was a formless void and the first thing God did on the very first day of creation was to create light. And we received the blessing of light because of it. God created light. And presumably in the story, he's referencing the sun. But I think all light then is from God. We now begin the season of epiphany, which is a season of light. The word epiphany is often thought of as kind of a churchy kind of term, and it kind of is. The better way to describe it, I would say, is the word aha. Now I get it, that kind of thing. An aha, an epiphany. We say, I've had an epiphany. Aha, now it finally makes sense. And in the context of Jesus, that's what we're talking about. Now, let's get back to the Christmas story. Where we are right now is Jesus has done a lot of growing up just since yesterday. Yesterday was the Feast of the Epiphany where we arri the arrival of the wise men. Presumably Jesus is probably no more than about two years old when the wise men finally arrive. And yes, our wise men are over in the Christmas crash. You see the star up there? The one that's always lit here in the church is lit 24 hours a day. It's right over the manger scene and the wise men have finally made it across the, uh, you know, <laughs> the chancel rail here. They've made it over to Bethlehem starting on Christmas Eve. They've made it there. So uh, that we're, we're beginning to celebrate is the arrival of the wise men. That was yesterday. Now we re meet the fully grown adult Jesus, roughly about 30 years old. And you thought kids grew up quickly today. Wow! In 24 hours, he went from two years old and now 30. Jesus did a lot of growing up in those uh, 24 hours. Now, I'd like to personally know, I really wish I knew all what happened in those intervening years. Don't you? I mean, I'd really like to know. What was it like to have Jesus in the family as your elder brother, perhaps? Maybe you were one of his younger brothers or sisters. And wouldn't you love to know what those intervening years were like? We're not told that anywhere in the Bible. Nowhere in the Bible does it give, give us detail other than that little cryptic story of when he was about 12 or 13 and he gets left behind. That's over in Luke's Gospel. But other than that, that's all we know of the uh, childhood and early adulthood of the man we know as Jesus. Our story begins with his baptism, which we read about today. 
Okay, so today is the very first time we encounter the adult Jesus. And from now on, until next Christmas, we encounter the adult Jesus with his parables and his miracles and his ministry. So from now on, that's the one we encounter. But it begins with baptism. And only two Gospels tell the story of Christmas, Luke and Matthew. That's the one we read on you know, Christmas Eve and so forth. But uh, the baptism is told in all four Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all tell the story about the baptism of Jesus. And they each tell it with a little different twist. Some say, you know, some have John the Baptist saying, I should be baptized by you. And now you're coming to be baptized by me? Those kind of details are kind of one gospel saying one thing, another gospel, and another thing, which is our sure proof that the story really did happen, that Jesus was in fact baptized. The question is why? Did he have to confess his sins? Well, presumably no. Did he have to become a member of the church? Well, presumably no. Well, we're not the only ones wondering. Even John the Baptist says, you know, couldn't figure out why Jesus was baptized. Jesus gives the rather cryptic answer in one gospel says, it's to fulfill all righteousness. That's it. That's the only explanation we get as to why Jesus was baptized. Well, here we encounter, we're going from an epiphany of sorts where you have the arrival of the wise men with Jesus as a little baby. That's a story that is just so filled with light and beauty. And undoubtedly, if you look back at all your Christmas cards, if you're like me, you probably received at least one that had an image of the three wise men. Uh, I did too. I had at least one in my collection of Christmas cards. I looked back and saw that I did have four of them. Okay, four cards with the three wise men. You know the Bible doesn't say there were three. The Bible doesn't say they were kings. Okay, it says they were wise men. We talked about this in our Bible study this morning out here. Uh, that we looked at that more closely from Matthew chapter 2. We don't, there's so much beauty in the story, so much light, and yet we don't really know anything about these men, where they came from, how did they get back, what was the star like? Um, was it one particular star, or was it a bunch of stars? Were it a particular constellation? Was it a supernova? You know, what was it? We'd like to know those details. We don't have any of them. We don't know that. What we have is a story that is meant to draw us into the story. A story so filled with light that it is giving us illumination as to who Jesus is. Today's story at the baptism of Jesus, we hear the voice of heaven from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. I can't think of anything more spectacular to hear. As a kid, do you remember your mom and your dad saying to you, you know, when you got a great report card, uh, uh, with you, I am well pleased. You did a great job. Keep up the good work. Wasn't it great to hear that? Well, just imagine Jesus hearing that on the day of his baptism. So we have the baptism of Jesus today, and we don't have any baptisms going on today. So uh, we are going to renew our baptismal vows here in a few moments, which are a little bit like what I like to think of as New Year's resolutions. You know, yes, we're in the time of New Year's. I know everybody thinks of Christmas and New Year's is in the rearview mirror, but it's still kind of, this is the very first Sunday of the, the church year and of the new year in 2024. And it's a time for us to get back to uh, basics, get back to the beginning. And I think that's really kind of the reason people were going out to John the Baptist in the first place. Nobody really wanted, I can't imagine anybody, wanting to get baptized into a muddy, salty river like the Jordan River. But they did. And what they were doing is a chance to, I said, I've said a few weeks ago, we said it was a chance for pe people to come clean, to begin again. And isn't that kind of the message of New Year's? Now, you heard me tell this story about when I, a couple years ago, uh, I think it was 2012, going into 2013, I came up with a brilliant idea of going to Times Square by myself on New Year's Eve. Yes, I did it. I, it was on my bucket list. I can actually say I did it. I went out there uh, when I was living in Washington, D.C., took the train all the way into Penn Station, got there about, uh, I don't know, about three or four in the afternoon on New Year's Eve day, and they were shuttling or pushing, more, more pushing, going all the way as far into the Times Square, block by block as you could get. Finally, they got us over one block and into Broadway and then funneled us down in 10,000s per block, smushed, technical term, 
all the way into as far down as you could get toward Times Square. And we stood there with perfect strangers, people I'll never see again in my entire life, standing there looking up at this electric star, okay, for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. It went on and on and on. But I will say, the thing that I learned that night was, other than the fun of watching each time zone go into the new year, one of the things I was listening for was what was the conversation like among these strangers that I'll never see again? And it was really illuminating. Oh, oh there's the word. Light. Illuminating. What I was hearing over and over again were people saying things like, I want to learn to play a new instrument. Or, I want to learn a new language. Or, I haven't seen my kids in years. I want to call them on tomorrow morning, New Year's Day, and say, I, I love you. That's what I was hearing, I, honestly, in, on Broadway, in Times Square, on New Year's Eve. I was actually hearing people talking about these New Year's resolutions, these way of saying, I want something to be different in the coming year. I want my life to do something different. Did they do those things? I don't know, maybe they did some of them, maybe they didn't. What seemed to matter most was that this seemed to be a moment in time for them of decision, of illumination. And here we were, standing here in the freezing cold, looking at an electric star on top of a building, waiting for it to come down and welcome the new year, all that stuff. Somehow, it was transformative. Two people got married that night. Okay, two, or two couples got married that night. All kinds of stuff was happening all around us for hours and hours and hours. And these people were transformed by this experience. And you know what? So was I. Somehow, I learned a lot about my fellow human beings that night, that each of us want to have those opportunities over and over again to begin again. Thankfully, we believe in a God of second chances, and third chances, and fourth chances, and fifth chances, and sixth chances, and 1,569,000th chance. Yep, over and over, unlimited chances to start again, to start a and to start anew. That, ladies and gentlemen, is light. Let there be light. Those wise men, I don't know whether they followed an actual star or not. One that could have been a star in their eyes or in their hearts, but by their experience with Jesus as a baby, as a young child, I picture they went home and no longer needed a star to follow. I think they went home totally transformed by their encounter with the young child Jesus. That's light. Let there be light among us. In the weeks of Epiphany, we learn about the gift of light. From the wise men to the waters of baptism, each week we are illumined a little bit more about who Jesus is, where we finally say, Aha! Now I get who you are. Amen.